Well, hello there. I wanted to uh, make a video for those who may have pedal problems or potential pedal problems or may need some help with the pedal that they think is not working right. Uh, I want to kind of guide you through the procedure that we will tell people what to do in order to see if it's an actual pedal problem or if it's just another problem that we can fix really easily without you having to send a pedal back to the manufacturer, which is always a pain, I admit. Uh, I don't like that myself whenever it happens to me and it's just part of life, unfortunately. But anyways, let's jump into like the 10 most common questions or concerns or problems that we get with people who have pedal problems. Better yet, how to solve them. Let's talk about the first thing, which is my pedal doesn't work. What do I do? The very, 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 very first thing you must do, this is very critical, is uh, take it out of the line. Isolate it completely. Here's what I mean. So as you can see, this is a small pedal board made up of mostly, uh, well, entirely Wampler stuff. There could be a bunch of things going wrong, and I will detail what those problems could be. But first of all, let's talk about a pedal that just simply won't turn on. Why would that be? Well, this is why. Power supplies, and power is very important. So for example, let me show you this Tumnus here. I've uh, purposely put a battery in it that is not nine volts. Uh, the Tumnus pedal requires a lot of voltage. Now, not voltage, it requires nine volts, but it converts that, well, there's a plus or minus. So it's, it's uh, about a 25 volt swing. So it's kind of increasing the voltage 20, 27, 25, somewhere in there. 20, maybe it's 27 volts. I forget off the top of my head. And as such, that requires a lot of battery power. It will eat a battery like crazy due to that. And plus, has a really awesome relay bypass circuit, which is uh, pretty cool. So whenever it doesn't get the power, rather than just dying and leaving you with a pedal that uh, the relays are stuck in the on position, uh, it senses that there's not enough voltage or current and it um, basically bypasses, and here's what it does. Okay, we have a Tumnus here, and I do not have the power supply plugged in. Here's what happens. Nothing, just flashes, and then turns off. And you're like, why? Why? Why is this happening? Well, that's because, um, really, you need to be using a power supply of some sort. And uh, I mean, you can use the battery, ship it with batteries for those who just, you know, can't wait to get it out of the box and just want to play it for a minute. That's why we do that. Oh, and by the way, if you're not sure how to actually get the battery in there, just take the screws off, take the screws off, the battery's right inside, put the screws back on. Another thing, I don't know if you can actually hear this. Let me turn the amp up. That is because even though the pedal is off, so even when the pedal is off, it's bypassed, you're still going to be, still going to try to use power. And now let's go to the very first thing you should do. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this from the pedal board and run two, two cables, one to the pedal, one to the amp. But first, we want to make sure our cables are good because that's also another problem. So first of all, make sure it's good cables. Make sure we put a brand new battery. Now, not an old battery that you've got from the fire, to the smoke detector, not one that's in one of your boss pedals, your, your metal zone that you haven't played for a year or whatever. Uh, we want to get a brand, we want to go to the store and buy a brand new battery and not just any battery. Uh, we want to buy a Duracell or uh, Energizer makes a really good battery as well because uh, it actually has more, it's capable of more current. We need more current, not just voltage. So we're going to uh, put a brand new battery in there. First of all, after we go to the store and buy it, brand new one, Duracell. Okay, now let's go to the next part. Okay, so I have my first guitar cable. We're going to just plug it into the amp and then we're going to plug it into the guitar. And then we're gonna make sure we have sound. We're gonna wiggle the jack or the cable, the plug, wiggle this cable and plug. And uh, we're gonna do that with the other cord as well. Why are we wiggling the plugs? Because maybe it's not working because your cable's bad. So we wanna make sure our cables are good. If it makes any sort of noise whenever you do that, use a different cable, go buy, a, go buy a new one. So we're gonna do that with both the cables. We're gonna run that into the pedal. Let's do that. Okay, so now I have the guitar cable, both good guitar cables going into the Tumnus. 
I have uh, a new battery installed in it, and I'm going to check to see if it works. Happy times. It does work. That was the problem, it was the battery. Uh, so let's look at some other problems that could happen as well. So it's super critical to actually use a power supply that's made for guitar pedals, guitar audio. You don't want to go to Walmart and buy like their inexpensive power supply that's uh, sort of made for all different kinds of things, but not really optimized for audio because uh, it doesn't have like all the filtering necessary that we want that we'll hear in that audio path. Uh, so make sure it is a good one. Voodoo Labs makes a great power supply. Uh, my buddy Dave Friedman, of course, makes a good one. True Tone makes the one-spot adapter if you want something a little less expensive. It's wonderful, fantastic. I think on our website we may have a couple uh, Wampler um, uh, adapters left, but we don't really, I don't know if we're going to keep selling those or not. So I would say for now, uh, check out True Tone if you're looking for an inexpensive adapter that works really well. Another problem you can have is if you're drawing too many milliamps off of that adapter or off of that power supply. Let me show you what I got here. So what I'm going to do, I'm running that Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus. I'm going to just daisy chain, well, these are daisy chained right now. Uh, I'm going to daisy chain all these with one of those outputs, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so um, I have that pedal power hooked up to Ego, Tumnus, Clarksdale, Plexi Drive, uh, another Tumnus, and a tuner. And I don't know if you can hear this or not. It's humming. It's making sound. Even with everything off, even with everything off, there's a hum. And if I turn something on, ordinarily you're thinking that's not good. Why is everything humming? Well, you're taking, uh, I think that's a hundred milliamp output and you're trying to run way too much off of that 100 milliamp. And that can happen with uh, some adapters if they're not capable of carrying that load. So you really need to know if you're powering your pedal board, like how, what the draw is roughly of your pedals and uh, not, to over, not to exceed it. And really, if, if you really want like the lowest noise possible, it's really good practice to just use a better power supply in general anyways. Uh, but definitely you are gonna get some hum if you're overloading um, and exceeding the amount of uh, a draw that that power supply is capable of. Now keep in mind, that's only on one of the outputs of that pedal power. It's not, uh, the pedal power can do much more. I just, I'm overloading it on purpose. So no disrespect to Voodoo Labs at all to make a great power supply. So if you add up your pedals, um, it'll be like, an, it'll say MA for milliamps. Um, if you add up to what they're going to draw, let, let's say it all equals 200 milliamps. Let's just make a nice round number. And then you, you find a power supply made for audio, but it's only 200 milliamps. That's cutting a little close. Um, increase that to 500 milliamps at a minimum. I think the True Tone stuff is like two amps, 2,000 milliamps in other words, and um, much better. Just much, I wouldn't say safer, but safer for your ear, I guess. You're not gonna have the problems that you may have when you're dragging the power down like that. By the way, um, the battery trick, the battery problem, honestly, that cures about 90 to 95% of all the uh, pedal problems that we get. It's usually a, a battery or a power issue. After that, it's generally a switch issue just because they're mechanical pieces, and or at least in the minis, the mini pedals, they're mechanical pieces. Uh, the older Wampler is mechanical as well. Newer ones are using relays, like I said, which are mechanical, but the relays last a much longer time. It is way more costly for us to build them that way, but that's okay because I think that's, um, you guys deserve it. Honestly, that's, I'm trying to make the best possible product I can. Uh, let me reiterate this. Uh, your battery is going to die if you don't have the jack plugged in, the power jack plugged into it, and um, the input, it, the input guitar cable is plugged into it. It is still using that battery. So if you're if you insist on using batteries, make sure you unplug that input cable to save your battery. Probably, really, to be honest with you, I would I would if you're going to use a power supply, I would pull that battery out of there because batteries do leak, and when they do that they'll get, cor they'll corrode and they'll basically make a complete mess of the inside of your pedal 
and it's nasty. It's terrible for the environment. I really wish we didn't use batteries anymore at all, but that's not my decision. That's customer's decision. Do you want batteries? I got to put batteries in it. So make sure you take the batteries out. It's not going to hurt anything leaving it leaving it in for right now but um one thing to note though is that whenever you plug that power jack inside of the pedal let me show you what i mean when you plug this power cable if i can get it out you can plug that power cable into the pedal it automatically disconnects that battery automatically it's designed that way there's a little it's like a little switching jack so when you put that cable into your pedal pretty much no matter what pedal it is as far as I know, as far as I've seen, it's going to disconnect that battery out of the circuit. So it's not, you're not going to run that and the battery at the same time. That would be bad. That would be really, really, really bad. Yeah. Don't sweat that, but do take that battery out of there uh, as soon as you get a power supply. So a problem that um, people have had whenever they're testing out the pedals, uh, whenever, they, you know, they, they email us, I have a, I have a problem with my pedal and I, I've actually done this too. So I'm not making fun of any of you guys that have done this because Trust me, I do dumber things than that. Just completely stupid things. But anyways, regarding pedals, <laughs> make sure, this is easy to do, make sure your guitar volume is up. And make sure your standby switch on your amp is on. And make sure the volume on your amp is on. Uh, I've done the same exact thing where I'm, I'm trying to figure out why doesn't this pedal work? What is the deal? And it's like this bypass is on or the volume on the amp is down. This is an easy, easy mistake to make. It happens to all of us. So I'm not excluded from it, but, uh, but make sure you keep an eye, uh, 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 make sure you keep that in your head. So just check that first. So let's say that, um, you have done all that, but you still find that, um, it's making noise. There's like, let's say there's noise, uh, whenever you are messing with the jacks, if you wiggle like this, and it's making noise, uh, mostly when the pedal's on, but not necessarily, not necessarily, uh, even when the pedal's off. And, and let's let's assume that whenever you take that cable out and you use the guitar to plug it in uh, to your amplifier, it doesn't do it then. It's only when you put it in the pedal. Well, could be uh, could be that the contacts are a little oxidized inside, so you can spray some deoxid in there, and um, that can help. Spray some, and uh, I've got a video on how to fix a Wapot. It works the exact same way. You just spray it inside there and um, work the plug in and out, and that should clean those contacts. Same thing on the power supply. If it's a little flaky, you can try that on the power supply as well. If the power supply uh, light flickers or turns off whenever you jiggle that, it could be more than likely uh, your, actual, your actual plug here, your actual wire could be a bad one of those. Very rarely is it actually the jack itself that is broken. It does happen, especially if you drop the pedal. If you step on the jacks a lot, that can happen as well. That's a great way to break a, uh, a jack. Switches on the inside. I, some people like to spray the de deoxid on the switches. I've never really found much luck with that myself, but what do I know? I'm just a guitar player with a guitar company, so uh, try it if you want. If you're not sure what to get, let me show you. So this stuff right here, works pretty good. Deoxid. Uh, I think you can get that from a bunch of different places including Amazon and uh, I think Stu Mac carries it if you like to buy from Stu Mac. Various places but that's what you want. Just spray it on there. Spray it in there. Work it out. Give it a second to dry and go to town. So let's say that even after all that um, you still have a hum. You still have a weird noise. You still have some sort of problem. Let's, let's call it a noise problem. Uh, here's another thing that I have found that uh, that happens from time to time, and that's whenever you have something on the same circuit as your guitar amp or the pedals that are plugged into the power supply. And that sounds weird, but see, in the wall, all the power is connected, so it goes from you know place to place to place to place to place to place on a given circuit. It just goes on down the wall on that circuit. And uh, let's say your washer or dryer is on that circuit. It, it'll cause some problems. It, not problems, but it will cause noise. You'll, you'll hear some noise in there a lot of times. Hair dryers have had that problem where I'm like, what is, what is, what is that? What is that weird noise I'm hearing? You know, one of the kids is running the hair dryer. <laughs> that happens as well. So keep an eye on that. So with, with noise, uh, what, I, what I like to tell people to do is just take like your whole setup, take it to a whole different part of the house so it's on a completely different circuit and see if it's noisy there. Other times it could be fluorescent lights. Like whenever I do these videos, 
I used to have a hard time with the fluorescent lights. Those are, um, well, they're like photo box lights, cheap ones at that, but they are fluorescent. And also in my shop next to me, my quote unquote shop, I have some regular old fluorescents in there. So I've made sure when I built this to make sure that those are all on a different circuit than what my amp is on. So um, if I, when I do put it on the same circuit, I, basically impossible where I would demonstrate it because just the way I have the power ran. But if I did put it, if those lights were connected to the same outlet, then you'd hear, you'd hear some noise in it. There'd be some noise. And speaking of noise, lastly and finally, it is the problem of why is my distortion pedal so noisy? So let's discuss that real quick because I, th I think this is a very important thing. Gain, distortion pedals. Gain increases noise. Why? Because it's increasing the volume. So if there's any noise whatsoever going into the pedal, it's just going to increase that a bunch. It's really exactly like a high gain amp, exactly. So let me give you an example of that real quick. Meet my uh, Marshall DSL 100H. Love this amp, has a super high gain setting or channel on it, two of them actually. So let me show you what happens. Got the gain up all the way. But let me hit the uh, gain boost, gives it more gain. Oh, I got the volume down. It's a lot of hiss. It's not up that loud. So, just like any distortion pedal, any overdrive, um, the higher the gain, the more. You're going to have some hiss when you turn that gain up. It, there's not really any way of getting around it. You can use a noise suppressor, but now you're gonna choke the note. So when you're holding a sustained note, it's gonna just slowly clamp and kill that sustain. So not the perfect ideal. If you're chugging along or jitting your uh, country and western music, that's a joke. You don't jit country and western music any, usually. But if you know, you're, do, you're doing that sort of thing that doesn't really require long liquidy sustained notes, then you're probably okay. There's nothing wrong with using that. But just please keep in mind, noise distortions, noisy overdrives. If your power, like we talked about a minute ago, if the power around you is uh, a little noisy due to the circuitry of the house or the apartment or wherever you're at, you're just gonna keep introducing more and more noise, especially if you have single coils like I use. Uh, just makes it even more noisy. So there you go. Uh, so I hope this uh, those, hope this helped answer some questions for you. I literally just about fell. I missed my seat. Embarrassing. Anyways, hope this really helped you guys. Um, hope it's kind of shed some light on um, you know potential problems with pedals. Hope it answers some questions. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you comment below. Uh, like the video if you like it. Share it with your friends if they think it's something. If you think it's something they can use. And we'll see you in a couple days or a week or so here shortly with another video. Thanks for watching, guys and gals. See you later. Love you.